You are fully aware of the overturning by the Supreme Court of Roe versus Wade. Again, I say my prayers are for the women of America. But as a man that can't carry or give birth to children, I recognize that it is not my place to decide what a woman can and cannot do with her body. To see how we're cheering our own demise. This argument, this issue can never be stated or proclaimed enough. And I want to take a backseat a little bit and let Bishop Wooden, as he uh, so eloquently does, uh, I want to let him give a defense and call out some of these preachers who should not be there. These are people who are not only traitors to the gospel, but those who happen to be black are also traitors to black people. As a matter of fact, any particular human being he not only is a traitor to the gospel, to God, but he's also a traitor to mankind. Slavery, when it ended, all of a sudden we had a population problem. I'm preaching. All of a sudden there were too many of us. There weren't too many of us when we were slaves. Couldn't make enough. Make the slave have sex with his own mother. Hence the word mother. You finish it. It was a wicked time. But God set us free. The nation went at war with itself to end slavery. Now there are those historical revisionists that says, well, the, re the, the Civil War had nothing in the world to do with slavery. Well, it, it, whether it did or didn't, when it was over, the emancipation took place. Too many people, too many preachers, particularly too many black preachers, are more black than they are biblical. And one of the things they always want to bring up is something having to do with slavery, Reconstruction, Jim Crow. But they never want to bring up ish, this issue. They never want to bring up race in regard to this issue. And they should. And there's a reason why. We'll get to that in a little bit. But Margaret came along, her and the eugenicist movement. We got too many people, 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 too many people. And you need to understand who he's speaking about. She simply just did not like black people. Now, she was also obviously not a Christian, but she didn't like black people. And she thought there were just too many, unless, as he said, unless we were slaves. Now, she wasn't around during slavery, but I'm pretty sure without question, she would love to have seen this because she thought that we were low people, that we didn't have the intelligence. We didn't have the self-control. And let's just be honest. In some cases, we kind of prove her point by what we're doing. We are we are not victims in our own demise. We are participants in our own demise. So she comes around and she wants to offer a means by which we could uh, eliminate ourselves, reduce ourselves. Now, how do you go to black people and convince black people to get rid of themselves? And uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, before she died, you know, she was sick. And uh, I think that part of her brain stopped working that tells you not to say things you shouldn't say. She said before she died, with Roe, we went too far in the passage of Roe. She said, I thought we wanted to get rid of those kinds of people that we didn't want to have too many of. Now, let's go back to 1970. In 1970, when Roe was passed, the major two populations in America was black and white. Ruth was not talking about getting rid of white folks. Let's be clear. People who are for abortion cannot be for black people. There's just no way around that. The funniest thing happened when they put the pill on the market. Black women wouldn't take it. Back then, black families, you know, 12, kids, 13, 15. Uh, your family was small if you didn't have but eight. And our enemies were trying to figure out a way, not only to kill us, but to stop us from reproducing. Black folk that honored big families. Y'all not saying anything. And black women wouldn't take the pill. Margaret said, now we got to figure out a way to get Negroes, if you will, to participate. And she went to Harlem, New York. And she got some people to work with her. Now let me ask you this before I preach. How many women in here have on shoes that you can easily take off? All right. Well, before I tell you who she got to work with, her, let me hide. She got black preachers. All right. All right. Didn't nobody throw a shoe, you know. I didn't want to go through that. 
Now, unless you think he's making this up, these are some of the black preachers who absolutely are for abortion. This week, America turned back the hands of time and declared war on women in this nation. Y'all do know America's going to hell, right? But my conviction is America can't go to hell with me and my family living here. I know that's not politically correct. I'm not supposed to say that. And some people will say, well, Bishop, you're a man of God. Are you pro-abortion? I am pro-human and civil rights. They don't care who it hurts. As a matter of fact, they just maybe, I don't know, maybe they want to be a part of what's happening. Now, there's a, there's a passage that applies to them. The Bible says, Amos says in 3.3, 3, do two men walk together unless they have made an appointment? Or how can two, some versions may say, how can two walk together unless they agree? They clearly agree with these people. Got the preacher to convince the people it is in your best interest to have a smaller family. It is your best interest to stop multiplying. It is in your best interest. And went from there till you see preachers now in pulpits. You see political candidates. You hear people cheering and getting all excited as we talk about a woman's right to choose. A woman's right to health care. A woman's right to do what she wants with her own body. And what they're talking about is one thing. And so women have rights too. I don't have a right to tell you that, and somebody said, well, some uh, super religious person who got a bunch of sin in their life said, well, abstinence is the answer. Well, you didn't abstain. And what kills me is, People out there protesting already had one. Uh, but we also believe that mothers have the right to elect where it is that they are in the season and the stages of their life. And they should not be criminalized for making decisions that, that will best suit them for where it is that they are. And what's bad about it? What's bad about it? You see it last week at the conventions? Did you hear how the people cheer and the roars that went up as they began to cheer the very procedure that is responsible for our race as I stand before you being not a race in decline, but a race that is dying. What he's saying is absolutely true. 40% of all abortions in America are by black women, represent about 11, 12, 13, 14% of the population, depending upon how it's measured. 40% of all abortions in America, about 70% in Georgia of all abortions. Abortion, the abortion rate amongst blacks are 28.6%. That is 28.6 out of every 1,000 uh, are abortion by blacks. That, what that equates to is about 33% of black pregnancies end in abortion. Think about that. One third of all pregnancies in America um, by blacks end in abortion. What does that really mean in real numbers? About 800 black babies per day are being aborted. Now, that doesn't even include the pregnancies that are terminated by drugs or other means. So approximately 20 million black babies have been aborted of the 62 million total. Think about that. Of all the blacks that died being brought over during the Middle Passage, of all the blacks that may have died during slavery, of all the blacks that may have died during Reconstruction and Jim Crow. As a matter of fact, of all the people that died in every war that America has been involved in, the Civil War, the Revolutionary War, uh, the Iraqi War, World War I, World War II combined, we have aborted more blacks than all of those combined. We are not uh, declining. We are killing our own selves. 70% of Planned Parenthood locations are in predominantly black communities. So we are doing exactly what this woman, uh, Ms. Sanger, wanted us to do. We are killing ourselves and doing it joyfully, doing it gleefully. Think about it. 800 babies per day are being aborted. One third of all pregnancies, black pregnancies in an abortion. Yes, we're dying. And that's to speak of nothing about when they do come, 70 plus percent are born in a household where the father is not there, which is going to also increase or help to replicate this cycle. 
I don't want you to say anything to your neighbor. I just want you to look at him. Just look around. Just look around. Look, 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 look. Just look around for a minute. We're, you, you're looking at people, if current trends continue, we're, you're looking at relics of the past. If current trends continue, let's get rid of, we don't need police brutality. We don't need black on black crime. We don't need heart attacks. We don't need cancers. We don't need heart disease. No, get rid of all that. If current trends continue, minus these things, we're done. And I love you enough to tell you. I'm one of the few preachers in this whole city. I call all of y'all. Say this. They won't say this. As a matter of fact, they would rather do the opposite. They were the, they're the ones that would rather call evil good, good, evil. Bad is those. And the Bible says, woe to those sorts of preachers. They don't want to do it. They don't want to do it. Either they are so satanic and they don't care, or they are so silly, so uninformed that it just blows by them. I don't know how that could possibly be. I don't know how they could hear the stats. I don't know how they can see what's happening and, 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 and claim ignorance. They do know. They simply don't care why it speaks to their evil, wicked, cold, empty hearts. Don't y'all, don't y'all see, this is why y'all got to wake up and stop being so spiritual and so heavenly bound that you're no earthly good. This is not just about reproductive rights. This is about voting rights. This is hard to hear, but y'all to listen. In order for a people to maintain themselves over a 25 year period, a fertility rate of 2.1 is needed. Fertility rate, you need to give birth to at least 2.1 children to, just to keep the race going over a 25 year period. In 1950, the black fertility rate, total fertility rate for black folk was 3.6. We're in good shape. In uh, 1970, Roe v. Wade was passed in the law. Let's see, 1950 we were 3.9. By 1975 we're down to 2.3. That's still better than 2.1. But today, today we're 1.7. But to see how we're cheering our own demise. When you look at this particular proverb, it's not just the 17th, it's also the 18th uh, that also applies. So haughty eyes, this is what God hates, haughty eyes. He says a lying tongue, but also, and hands that shed innocent blood. That's babies, innocent babies, those who are pre-born, those human beings that just have not had the opportunity to be born. The babies who did not have anyone to go and fight for them, but rather had people who would march in streets to make sure that baby didn't show up alive. And he says, these are people who are also a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that run rapidly to evil. That's what we have. And the sad part is we've got black preachers or any preacher for that matter, who would stand up in a pulpit and do that, I can promise you this, hell is where you are going to end up if you do not repent.